Hey, how's it going? And today we're just going to explore the difference between function binding and property binding in the UMG and the Unreal Motion graphics. The reason I wanted to do this tutorial is because it wasn't clear to me what was the difference between the two. And so I just wanted to make a tutorial as a note to myself and also to maybe to explain it to anybody else that has any questions about it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is we're just going to look at a like a progress bar. So what we're going to do is we're just going to right click and create a widget blueprint here. And this is just real quick and dirty here. So I'm just going to dock this up here. I'm just going to get a canvas panel, drag that onto the scene. And then we'll go ahead and get some text. And we'll just drag this right here. And we're just going to call this health. We'll go ahead and size it to content. And then we're just going to go ahead and get a progress bar, progress bar, and drag that onto the scene. By default, we can make this longer. By default, this is set to, I'm just trying to make it look a little better. By default, it's set to, let me see if I clicked on it. It is set to a value right here. And we can set it here to like 0.75. And then there's that. And we'll go ahead and compile and save this. We'll just leave it called new widget blueprint. And then we're going to go into the third person here. We're going to go over here to blueprints. We're going to come in here real fast and we're just going to make a variable and we're going to call this health. And we'll just set it as a float and we'll go ahead and make that public and we'll compile and save that. And then we'll jump back into the, our widget here. Now here's where it comes up. So we want to be able to update this progress bar. Now, the function binding would be if I click on here, you can see to our percent, we only have one option right now, and that is to bind. In terms of the three options, you basically have function binding, property binding, and then you have, you can also do an event dispatcher. And of those three, event driven is probably the fastest because it only updates when it needs to update. The function binding is actually making two calls per frame and so it's the most expensive way to update a text variable such as this. So anyway, we'll go ahead, it is variable. We're gonna go ahead and bind it here, create binding, and it pops us over here into this function. And so we're just gonna set this up really fast and you'll see that it's getting called every frame and it's actually making, you can't see this, but it's actually making two calls. It's calling the blueprint and then it's getting an update on the values. So it's the most expensive in terms of processing. It's really not an issue and if you have a small game, but if you have a complex game, this can start adding up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press Alt and disconnect this right here. And then we're gonna go right click and get player character. And then we're gonna drag off of this and well, we can drag off here too. And we're just gonna cast to BP third person character to get our that health variable. So we drag this up here. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna print a string. So we'll print a string so you can see what it's doing. Print string, and we got that. And then we can, we should be able to get, if we pull off of here now, we should be able to get our health variable, get health, and then we can just plug that well, we can plug it in here to our string and then we can plug it in over here to our return value and then we can plug it in over here. So that's everything, right? And we can compile and save this. And then if we go in, oh, one more thing I've got to do. I've got to go back in here to the third person template real fast. And I guess off of event string here I gotta create a widget so I gotta create widget widget here and zoom in here and I'll set this to my new widget blueprint here and we'll just add it to the viewport here add to viewport there we go and then I'll compile and save this now I'll go ahead and if I hit play you can see there's our health bar now, let me hit escape. If I go into the third person here and I go to float, I can go ahead and set this value. So let's say I set it to whatever value I want. Let's say, what is that, 0.88? Yeah, so just leave it at 0.88, compile and save. You go in here and hit play again. You'll see there's our health bar at that value and it's see how it's getting called every frame. And what you can't see is that it's making two calls per frame. So it's considered the what's called function binding. So if I hit stop here and I come in here to the designer when we went this route, 
here on the value of our progress bar, it's actually, if I go into graph here, you'll see this is our function. This is called function binding. So it's the most expensive. The next one we're gonna talk about is property binding. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at property binding, which is more cost effective than function binding. So this is a function here, but now we're gonna do a property binding. With this function here, we're not only casting, we're also querying at the same time, each frame. So with the property binding, we're only gonna be querying each frame. So it's a lot more efficient it's significantly more efficient, although you're still doing something every frame, probably maybe more than what you need, depending on what it is you're doing. So, and like I said, with a small project, it probably is not gonna be the end of the world. But anyway, if you come over here into Designer and we click on the progress bar, if we come to bind here, you'll see we have our function there. We have an option to create another binding, but then we have, this is our function binding right there, but we're not bound to anything at the moment. So what we're gonna do is, for this one, we're gonna go back into the graph, we're gonna go into the event graph, and we're gonna draw off the event construct, which is only called when there's an update. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cast to BP third person character, and then we're gonna go get the player controller here, and we're gonna put this in right here. And then what we're gonna do is right click on this and we're gonna promote that to a variable. So let's go ahead and compile and save that. And we're getting a warning here. Oh, I'm sorry. It, this is play get player character. So it corrected me. Get player character. My mistake, sorry about that. But that's a good thing about blueprints is they often let you know what the problem is. Okay, so there we got that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go ahead and get that same health variable again. Get health, because now we're connected. And then we're gonna just go ahead and off of here, print a string like we did in the other print string to see what the value is. So we're gonna print string and just pop that into there. And let's go ahead and compile and save that. Now to create the binding, the property binding, we go back into the designer view, click on the progress bar, and we come to bind, and you'll notice now we have the option here. So you have a function here to bind, and then you have a property bind. And so you, we want the property bound, and it's to the health. And we click like that, compile, and save. And now if we go into, and our value right now is set on the blueprint here, this value is set right there at 0.88. So we'll come in here, we'll hit play, and there, as you see, 0.8 up there. It just goes up there for a minute. But it's still querying every frame, but it's not casting and querying. So this way is less overhead. Property binding is less overhead. And I'm gonna do one more video after this. I'll conclude it here. It's just take too much time. But the next one is event driven or event dispatchers. And that's the most effective way to update your UMG. Stay tuned for that one. It should be coming up within the next couple hours.